Fear not, everyone, because CBS 8 has given us the fact check that amid the Israel-Hamas war and the deployment of 2,000 additional Marines and sailors into a region and warships, U.S. military draft not returning amid Israel-Hamas war. Oh, because oh. that's that's the question everyone had already asked. I love this pre-bunk. This is what they call <laughs> the it. The pre-bunk. They call it a pre-bunk. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Where they put out a fact check before the story actually hits for this reason. Yeah. They're just wondering that if, in case you were wondering, I mean, it makes sense. That's that's the obvious first question. If if no one is enlisting in the military, partially because no one is qualified to enlist in the military, mm -hmm. that's one of the biggest deterrents. There are people who would want to, and they just don't meet any of the fitness or mental health requirements. So on top of that, we don't have enough people, then yeah. the draft is the only way to get around those standards. Exactly. I, I had read a statistic, and I, I you can't quote me on it, but it was something like 70% of Gen Z like wouldn't qualify for the military because oh, it's, everybody is sick and everybody is fat. It's I just, sick, fat, just, and anxious. Yeah. You go to Google. And has allergies to weird stuff. Yes. You go to Google and you search for U.S. military draft and there's just tons of articles making sure everyone knows there will not be a military draft. You want to know what that Thank makes me think? Thank you for that. That there's definitely a draft. That there's <laughs> definitely <laughs> going to be a draft. It makes, no, but how could there not no, be? This makes me think, this makes me think that they are going to have one but right now they're telling you no no we're not going to have one but then something huge has to happen yep. where everybody's going to get behind it and say yeah like another 9-11 and they say oh yeah I, we has need to be it. worse it has to be worse it does absolutely at this not, point see I, I, or maybe not with with 9-11 the issue was that americans felt attacked so a bunch of people were like i've got to do my duty and defend my nation so they enlisted <laughs> little do they know that they're going to be sent to iraq and afghanistan for nation building projects mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but uh the, the the people who enlisted and signed up for this that wasn't completely noble and then you have corrupt powers that be that be that exploit, manipulate. Well, that was DeSantis. Consi That's when DeSantis signed up. Considering that we're in dire straits now, militaristically, like recruitment rates are really, really low. Mm -hmm. It may not be. It may not be so much about. It, it may just be they're going to force people to do it. Right. With 9-11, you had people who are willing to do it. Mm -hmm. If something like that happens now, right, we've got all, all this reporting about an open border and potential terror attacks with, and, 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 and the war. That's happening in, in in the Middle East. Yeah, they might just be like, we have no choice. However, it will be they, they, there will have to be something 9-11 ask. Well, it would be like Vietnam. Remember how I mean, there were so many young men who got called up to Vietnam who had no idea what they were doing mm -hmm. and ended up just being essentially massacred. Like that yep. was a, that it's was tragic. a pretty it's horrible crazy. situation. And because we had a lot of um, we had weak nationalism at the time and. Um, and we had a bunch of men called up who didn't know what they were doing. And I think that the young men we have now are probably far less qualified than my father's generation was to go to Vietnam. Yeah. I mean, they regularly fail basic fitness tests. Right. I think it's so I, I've been talking to some members of Special Ops Military Forces for a story I'm working on. And it's interesting because if you from the anecdotal uh, evidence that I have, you know, people who want to be in special force, they want to be Green Berets, they want to be Navy SEALs, mm -hmm. they tend to be even more elite. Those standards have gone up just because of who is electing to be a part of them. It's, you know, Division One athletes, mm -hmm. it's former professional athletes, people who are in the best shapes of lives. But just the infantry, which is really what all branches of the military need, these basic levels, uh, those standards are lower and they're regularly mi missing their recruitment goals. I mean, right. and the military is in a position where they are beginning to sort of alter their reporting numbers to make it look like they're not doing as badly as they could as we go into the brink of World War III. I mean, it's not a good position. There is no way they don't end up drafting people if they ultimately decide we are I at do, war. I do think that there's a difference, though, as well. Like, I think that if the United States were attacked, as it was with 9-11, which is a different situation than fighting in foreign wars, I think that if there were, um, you know, there's there has been talk of these some, what, 5 million illegal immigrants who have come into the U.S. since Biden took office, that there could be terror cells among them. We have seen the um, the the great numbers of single young men entering the country with no real rhyme or reason as to what they could possibly be doing here. If we started seeing the kind of suicide bombings or, you know, terrorist attacks that, you know, Hamas unleashed on Israel in what, like the late 80s and into the 90s, if we started seeing that in the U.S., I think that you would see nationalism 
go up. I think that a lot of young people would be like, I'm going to fight for America because the the fight has come to America. But I do think that there is a lot less of an appetite to send our children to go fight in foreign wars under this idea that we're protecting democracy when we're watching our own democracy and our own nation fall apart. I totally agree. I think I think there would be people who would say, I want to defend America, but I think they would be less likely to enlist and get deployed far away, they would want to stay close to their families. You might see an increase in like maybe the National Guard, but even that could be deployed internationally. I think people, right. if we saw an increase in, in domestic on the ground in the U.S. tax, the desire to protect would be there. I just think it would be a deterrent from joining the military. And they, they wouldn't join. They'd, they'd form a militia. Mm-hmm. Form a if, militia. If we're seeing You might see people join local States. law enforcement, yeah. but I think it, the chance that you could be deployed away from your family when you know there's an increase in, in well, domestic it would be hard to. It would also be hard to join local law enforcement. The kind of laws that we've seen enacted against law enforcement officials um, has been pretty grave in the past several years. I mean, the the defund the police movement was shockingly effective, not just in actually pulling funds by city council of police departments, but changing the laws across the board. We had a report this morning. I came in to work this morning. uh, I turned on my phone and I was at work, but I came in. The commute is crazy. (laughs) Right, it's crazy. Um, but yeah, Ari Hoffman put this report together about uh, this uh, 911 call in Seattle that was made public. And on the call, it showed that um, there was like a domestic abuse situation. The guy was beating up this woman. She was like trying to get to her kid and protect her kid or whatever. He drags her into the car, uh, forces her to drive. She's being pursued by police officers and the police officers call off the pursuit because they're like, oh, we're not actually allowed to pursue unless yeah. there's probable cause of something. And they're afraid to pursue. That's true, I think, not just Seattle, but in Chicago, I think, as well. Mm-hmm. That's what was going on. It's like the police officers aren't allowed to give chase after a certain point. So the morale has got to be really low. And there are, you know, and like... Police recruitment is low. Police recruitment is low. And that's a big part of it, too. Like in New York City, they have been you know, cutting funds. Mayor Adams has been threatening to cut funds for police officers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And kids who are enlisting and thinking about joining a militia, they do have to know their constitution well because the government, the federal government does have the right to call up, um, call up the militias to to fight. They're, that's written. But, it, but it's but it's yes. Mm-hmm. And if we if we operate under the traditional sense of militia, that would matter. But all that really means is conscription. Because militia back in the day wasn't so organized. It was just the local men in the area would yep. take up guns and they'd fight if they if they had to. I think what we'd end up seeing is, is if there were attacks in the United States, people would look to their neighborhood watch or the neighborhood leaders and just be like, tell me where to stand. They wouldn't sign any papers or do anything formally. And really, which would make it really difficult for the U.S. government. Well, mm-hmm. you know, that's... Oh, go ahead, Josie. Uh, so, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. So, so really everything... So when it comes to war in the Constitution, it's written on a defensive stance. So it's Article 4, Section 4, and it it says that it's the federal government's duty to protect the states from invasion. And I mean, we're in one. There's been declared one, you know, but that's really the only, that's the only thing it says. It doesn't say anything about offense at all. all That's interesting about protecting states from invasion Mm -hmm. because so many states have been Mm -hmm. invaded Mm -hmm. by the federal government's policies with this illegal immigration thing. Like, why I, I find it perplexing that states aren't standing up for themselves more. You have New York City being like, hey, it's too much. Well, New York City is like, come help us, federal government. Whereas Greg Abbott in Texas is like, I am invoking my right to defend Texas and then they as just the governor. Cut his, uh... And then they're like, stop doing that. Immediately <laughs> stop. stop. I think that's the craziest thing. I mean, we I'll probably all followed it for so long. But with that uh, floating buoy yes, barrier, right. at first they were like, it's not humanitarian. People could drown. He's like, yes, we should deter them from swimming and potentially drowning. And they're like, <laughs> we've changed our mind. You were supposed to get congressional approval. And then he was like, but no, I don't need that. I'm, I am here to defend Texas. And I think that's this weird position, the Biden position, the Biden administration is walking in. You'll get them, you know, authorizing through Mayorkas uh, more construction of the border wall. And then they immediately walk it back because mm-hmm. their policies are hurting the country and they know they have to act because not only is New York suffering, but Texas is suffering. There, No one is going to stand by them in this next election cycle if they don't do something. On the other hand, they said they wouldn't uh, build the wall. And so they look like hypocrites because they are. 
They're only sort of board, building it. And they're building it not in the necessary places, from what I understand. I mean, Chicago. They never do anything right. But <laughs> yeah, so Chicago actually had, um, they had the residents of Chicago, the black the black residents. And they were, because I guess they're sending a lot of migrants to Chicago. I love that the Chicago, black residents, the black residents were, like, were like, no, no, get out of here. They're like, we already get the crumbs and you want the crumbs of our crumbs? Like, <laughs> I sort of had this idea when I saw that, when I saw those people standing up in Chicago, I was like, maybe all us Americans can remember that we're all Americans and we're all on the same team and we don't have to like be divided up by these racial segregated ideas like, you know, black Americans are Americans and, you know, like white Americans are Americans and well, and illegal immigration Latino Americans are Americans and like we're here. Let's protect our country. Yeah. Can we do that together? We used to be a melting pot. And the answer is kind of no. We I'm can't. Not, I mean, do the thing is, together. illegal immigration hurts impoverished communities more because it adds an additional burden to a, uh, a community that's already struggling. So it makes sense to me that people who would feel as though they are disadvantaged would then be like, please close the border. Please stop. This is not helping us. It's just marketed as this thing like you're so you're so mean and they're just coming here because there is economic turmoil in their country. And ultimately, we know that that's not the case. Like in slim cases, people are seeking uh, asylum, but it's not the wide majority that the Biden administration would like it to be. Right. Let's, let's, and then you're uh, destroying a... Queens with a brutal mm -hmm. sex trade. Thanks for watching this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. and become a member over at TimCast.com for uncensored members-only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.